I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. On this video, we're back on the 71 Barracuda. Um, we're going to go ahead and put some lead on the seams. We're going to do all these um, areas where the factory would do lead. I'm going to go over some of the reasons why I use lead, other substitutes to lead. But before then, we're going to go ahead and prep this car. As you can see, it's been sitting for a while. It's got lots of dirt on it. Um, when we go to do the lead, this everything's got to be bare metal and really clean. So we're going to go ahead through first and strip out all the e-coat. You see we got um, etching primer on this car to protect the bare metal when all these new panels were done and we want to put a good epoxy after the lead work and seal this car up before the bodywork stage so we're going to go over all that we're first going to go ahead and take our eastwood and some stripping disc and all that and strip this car down um, you can see right here that's going to be one of the main channels we're going to have to really focus on getting in it's on the rotisserie so you'll see working and stripping the car at this point is going to be easier now than it was earlier so we're going to go ahead and strip it down and we'll come back and we'll go over some of the lead stuff so stripping out this Barracuda, we're going to use the Eastwood SCT on this project. There's other ways, a DA, um, that you could strip this car. I've done this in other videos too. I'm using the black stripping drum here. The red drum will work also. Um, there's a drum with sandpaper. That's another way to do it. Right now, I think with the E-coat, the black drum works the best. It doesn't put a lot of heat on it, and it just really does a nice job cleaning it right off. Personally, there's no right or wrong way about stripping it. I do like to start in a certain direction and work my way over on the panel. I think the more even you can keep a panel as far as heat, pressure, and everything, the better the body work's going to turn out. You see, every now and then, I am touching the quarter panel. Yes, it's bare metal. We're going to go over with wax and grease remover right after we're done. And I'm just making sure the SCT isn't putting any heat on the panel it's not warp anything if that's the case we do need to back off of it and change what we're doing i am running this at a high rpm i think i'm actually the highest it's gonna go on speed wise but i am putting very little pressure that's what i found best for this eco now if you're using filler i think it's better to rip through filler if you slow it down and put more pressure into it but like i said this eco it's very thin the reason we're stripping this i don't trust this these quarter panels the roof these are all chinese body parts so in sense this e-coat, you know, I've heard stories about people painting cars and then the e-coat peeling off. I don't always get it off the inner structure or underneath the car or areas that, you know, if a little bit of something ever happened, it's not the end of the world. It could be touched up. But as far as external body parts that you see and are going to be body worked and we're going to block sand, 100% take it down to bare metal. Probably the best thing about this Barracuda is I'm stripping brand new panels. You don't know how many times we strip these old cars and it's what mystery you're going to find. Great thing about this car, I mean, we start on the back to the front. There's no surprises here. We're coming down. It's the same coating. Everything's brand new. There's no dents in this car. I've worked this car front to rear. And everything that is in a gray epoxy primer right now has already been stripped down to bare metal. This car currently has no filler on it front to rear. Obviously, the SCT with that giant drum can't get into the drip rails. It can't get into where we're going to fill the lead, door jam areas, wheel wells, real well. So we're going to go through with a surface prep disc and just kind of finalizing everything and touching everything up. I am using a yellow surface prep disc. Um, you could use the red ones too. I think for this, though, the yellow one's fine. Also, where we're going to put the lead, you see, I'm running through it with a stiff wire brush on an angle grinder. I want to get every bit of paint, material, or anything else that could be an impurity out of that seam. And I think the only way to do it properly is really dig the wire brush at high RPM in the areas. Now that we stripped all that e-coat off with the Eastwood stripping drum, the surface is too smooth. So... When we do apply the epoxy, you need a tooth spore to grab. So we're going back through with the DA on 120 grit. And if you 
read the data sheet for the primer that's what it calls for on bare metal so we're going back through with the 120 grit i did go through the whole car with a hood the fenders and everything else that already had the epoxy coat on it and i'm going to da that i want a fresh base front to rear in the car i want everything evened out i did a lot of spots you see on the hood i repaired one other area that we saw so i just want everything clean we're going to epoxy coat it one time over again to start with our solid base and then this car is going to be sealed up for the body work after the lead works all complete Working our way down, the, the DA, you don't have to really dig into this. Just a light tooth front to rear is all you need. You can actually see the difference, you know, where the metal's all shiny now that I'm DA in that quarter panel. And it really dulls it out with the scratches. And that's really what you want. Now that everything's cleaned off, we're going through, just because I did touch the car. At this point on, we won't be touching the car with bare hands as best we can. I have the gloves on, we're using wax and grease remover, and I wipe down this car two times. We're being extra heavy with it. I did blow it off before this, just to get any dust particles off too. This is where you want this car to be clean, stay clean, because now your metal's, metal's very vulnerable. Now that we got the car stripped down, we're gonna go ahead and jump on the lead work. As you can see, this is most of the stuff we're gonna need for the lead work. We got a couple extra things I'm gonna just show you because if you're not doing lead, you know, the lead area, I think the reason we're gonna use lead, these cars that we stripped down are 50, 60 years old. When we take the lead out, the lead looks just like the day the factory installed it. I'm a fan of lead. I think it's a lot more work. And, uh, but the payoff in the long run, when done properly, I think can, the car can last another 50, 60 years at least. It's been proven. Saying that, there are some other good stuff and I have used it. This is what else I will use. It's all metal. It's an aluminized filler. I'll use this over you know standard fillers just because of the thickness in the lead seams. You could also make a patch and patch over and then butt weld the area so it's all flush. That's another way I've seen people do it. Um, we might do something like that on a project that I'm thinking in the future of my own. But right now, another thing you could use is a kitty hair, which is a fiberglass reinforced. Um, Evercoat makes it. Um, filler also, I've heard people have good success with that. Saying that, we're gonna use the lead. Um, a couple things to go over. We're also going to sand down. You saw I stripped the car right now. It's in its bare metal phase. We're real happy with it. It's ready for epoxy primer. Now, this is the best time to do the lead. I also don't want to touch this car with my um, anything but gloves on because the oils and everything else. We put wax and grease remover you saw. We're going to put that on before we prime it again. We are going to go over this area now since we only went 80 grit on here. We're going to go back over with a, I mean, we went 120 grit. We're going to go back over with an 80 grit just over our lead area to give it a little bit more too to bite into. So let me get the glasses. We'll get the air hose and we'll go ahead and grind that area down. We're also going to jump around on the car a little bit here or there. So, but I'm going to go past the leaded area just to make sure we got a good grip everywhere. And you could see you want to get down in all these seams and everything. This is easier for this car because it is a brand new panel. So for me to really clean this out, didn't take as much work if you had something that was 50 years old and had pits in there and everything else, you'd have to really focus on a wire brush or a deburring tool. So let's do this. We'll fast forward the video. You don't need to push real hard on this. You're not trying to dig the metal. You're just trying to scuff it up. Same thing as earlier, just to get a good tooth so the lead and the tenon flux will be able to have a firm base to grip onto. As you can see, we went over a lot further. We're gonna actually need to lead in the area. We're gonna go ahead and get some wax and grease remover and clean it up. What I was saying too, this is a deburring tool. This is what I would get if the area is pitted along with a real pointy wire brush and you could also brush it by hand. But we don't need this since everything was smooth and you saw I did go over ours with a wire brush too, just to be sure. So we're gonna get some wax and grease remover to remove anything else or contaminants on there. 
Yeah. It's all about cleanliness. What's under the lead is what causes it to fail, not the lead itself. So go ahead and wipe this area off with a clean rag. All right. Now that we got this done, I'm gonna flip the car around. We're gonna do all this car at the same time, and then we're gonna take the next step. So I'm gonna do this area to the bottom here, the front on both sides and the other side of the car. So stay we'll come back and we'll turn the torch on and we'll get to the next step in the process. All right, we got the rest of our corners done. They're all ground down with 80 grit. They're cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead, we got our torch out. What you do need if you are using a torch, you can use a butane, protein, uh, propane little uh, cylinder like this. I have done lead or removed lead when we're not in the area of the torch. Um, I prefer this tip for the lead. It's just, it's not as hot, it's more controllable. We're gonna use this torch adapter right now. We got this on there and what we're doing, we're only using acetylene. This is uh, through a product through Eastwood and basically convert your torch into something similar to this. You could see the difference where you're running the, the gas through and it pulls the oxygen. That's the same thing right here. We're only gonna run the acetylene through. These holes are where your oxygen comes through and picks up. So. That's what we're gonna do, you stick it on there, and if you run the oxygen, you melt it. Ask me how I know years ago in the past. So we'll stick this on there, and we're gonna, like I said, I don't even have the oxygen turned on in the tanks. We're gonna go ahead and use tinning butter. Um, it's basically a flux for the solder. This has some lead in it, and it's uh, mostly tinning stuff. Um, we're gonna go ahead and apply it with a copper Brillo pad. I like to rotate between the brush and the Brillo pad. Um, this also could get at Eastwood or some other places that sell lead. Um, it's, I think, a stainless steel brush headed. But we'll go ahead and get the acetylene turned on. Now, another thing with the lead, I don't have gloves on and I'm not gonna try to touch the car. The reason is I have a tendency of, you know, when I'm handling the lead and everything, usually you get hot and it'll burn a little bit. What I don't want, I'd rather get burnt than have a, a glove, a latex glove melted to my hand. So that's the reason we're not in gloves, but we're gonna do our best not to touch the car. So we'll go ahead and get our Settling turned on. Turn the flame down a little bit. Now, what we're gonna want, you only wanna do lead in an area that expands outward. You can't do an area that's gonna try to suck up in. See, all body panels on cars for the most part are made in the shape where they come outward for strength. So we need to focus on that. There's supports behind here, so we're not worried about it. We're still not gonna try to run this heat all over the place and try to put too much heat in this panel. We're gonna just get enough on there what we need and we're gonna clean it up. So take our tinning butter, put it next to my chair. And I'm gonna wear glasses in case it splatters, so there is that safety. So I'm gonna use the brush first. We're trying to keep this a little bit cleaner. Get a little bit on the brush. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat the area first. Now, what this is doing, this is also clearing out impurities in this area. Still not hot enough, we gotta go a little bit hotter. It should be melting away right away. And I'm gonna put a little bit excess on there and I'm gonna come back through with a copper pad and really rub it in. See how that shines up like that? That's what we want. And anywhere you see that, that's where you're able to put your lead. Just like earlier, we went further with our sandpaper, we want to go further with this too. And what I'm doing, I like to work my way from the top down, it's just easier for me.
Now, I realize a lot of people are gonna say we don't have masks on and you know we're working with lead. Obviously, I'm doing it for the video. We're in an open area. I got a giant garage door right there. And you see, I'm working away from the lead. I mean, anything you work with is gonna have some risk, whether you're TIG welding, you know, stainless, there's all kind of inherent risk with it. So it's one of those things you take it for what it's worth. Um, protect yourself how you best you feel you can. And you know, sometimes you just gotta get the job done. But saying that, be as safe as you can. We gotta work our heat down a little more now. Switch over to the Brillo pad a little bit, show you how that works. It's very similar in a sense. The Brillo pad will put it on a little thicker. That's why I do like it at times. So I like to hold it just like that, keeping the clean edge down. This is a brand new pad. I only use this one time. Every time, like, so I get, if I do lead work again, the Brillo pad gets thrown away. That's why usually I'll run it with the brush first and I'll come back through with a Brillo pad. We're gonna go ahead and speed up the video just for the time's sake. What you're doing here, you get the point though. You want a uniform, clean surface full of the tinning material where you're gonna apply lead. You want no impurities. Now, the lead is only gonna stick where this tinning flux is. Just remember that. So if you have an area that's not shiny, you're trying to put lead up here, it's gonna just roll right off. I am gonna go back over it one more time. You see, just heating it up. I'm working my area down a little bit further, realizing I didn't go down deep enough, but I'm just kind of wiping in the area and just making sure one more time we have full coverage. All right. We're gonna let this cool for a minute or two and I'm gonna get it prepped and we're gonna come back and I'll show you what we're gonna wash it off with. We're just gonna let it cool where it's not baking hot and we don't jar the metal, but we're gonna cool it. So we'll come back in a second. We got about two to five minutes of cooling time. We're gonna go ahead and wipe this area first underneath just to get all the excess off there. We're trying to get as much of this off possible without using a lot of water just because of the bare metal. So we wipe most of our excess off, get that off. And what we got to do, we have to convert it over because the tin is a real acidic solution. So what we're using now, we're using a uh, baking soda mixed with uh, warm Luke water. So you don't want to use a ton of it, but this is going to neutralize the acid or the tin, really. You're going to use this after the acid, too. So you see, we're just wiping all the excess off on it. And you could see the tinning line where we went up to and where we're gonna be able to actually apply our lead successfully. And to me, that's gonna work. We're gonna build it up and honestly, we're probably gonna go over with a little bit of glazing putty in the future. This is gonna be a vinyl top car, so we don't have to go crazy with it. So that's cleaned up right there. Like I said, we got a lot of baking soda, a heavy mix on the baking soda. That should neutralize it. Now, what we're also gonna do then, I'm gonna come back, 
with the torch, we're going to turn it back on and we're going to air dry that area real quick. But we're not going to get this too hot. Just we're going to just lightly dry everything up and just clean every any other other impurities off. So just lightly just get the water dried up quick in that area. Give it one more wipe down with a clean rag, not this one. All right, so just like we did another one, I'm gonna go around the car, do the other parts on this, and we'll come back and we're gonna do the lead. I like to work with one step at a time, just cause I have the tools out, and it just it's easier than doing the whole process and coming back. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, so now that we did everything in the tin and butter, we're gonna go take a brand new stainless steel brush, and we're gonna just go over this area, just to kind of clean up any other impurities that might be on it. This almost acts like sandpaper too, so you're giving a tooth for the lead to stick and just roughing up the area. that done we're gonna grab our lead so this is I think it's a 30 70 60 40 tin to lead stick it's not like old style sticks I heard if you used the stuff back in the day you know um, it was a lot better but we'll go ahead it, it works it does the job so we'll go ahead and we're gonna just take a little bit of sandpaper we're gonna just rough up our lead just make sure there's nothing from sitting around on it this is the same practice as if you're TIG welding, you're just cleaning up the filler material. And that's all we're doing. We're pretty much body soldering at this point. So I know I'm gonna use probably at least four sticks, so we'll go ahead and prepare just the four sticks initially. So also, we're going to take a little acetone, put it on a clean rag, and we're going to clean our lead sticks. Just again, this is just removing any impurities that might be on them. It doesn't look like it. I did clean this table with acetone before we started. so. Should be good. So there we go, our lead should be clean. Now, we'll go ahead and just rough up our powder a little bit, get any, again, any junk off of it. You could tell this, this has been used a time or two. think I'm going to need the rounded paddle, but we'll clean it up too. You see, I don't really use this one as much. All right, put our cap on our acetone. We're going to set that aside since we mess with the torch. Denim. The reason for the denim is we're going to dip our 
paddle lube, our paddle, um, yeah, soldering paddle lube. This is gonna stop the lead from sticking to the paddle and everything else. So you're gonna need this. And then, so we're gonna get this warm and we're gonna wipe it on the denim. Why use denim? It doesn't have anything that with the heat might wipe off. So denim's the reason what you're gonna use. Um, I also, you'll see, I like to vice grip my lead. That's when I get towards the end, we're gonna use the vice grip to feed it on there. Now what you're gonna do, you're basically, just mostly, you could heat the lead stick, you could heat the area, you're getting this hot enough to just push it in there. And just what you wanna do, you wanna build it higher, cause we're, go, go, we're gonna go back through and we're gonna file it second. So let's get our, um, our torch fired up. So we're gonna fill the lead first, then we're gonna come back through with the paddle. I am gonna get a little bit on there to just to get it ready and get it going. We're gonna put a little bit there in a spot that I can wipe off. All right, so let's fire up a torch and get rolling with it. You want the flame again control to your ability. The, you don't want to be have this thing cooking if you can't keep up to it. Again, you're basically soldering right now. So you want to get in a comfortable position. If you want, we can actually trade and I'll go on this side. It's going to be easier for me to fill out over there. So come on around, we'll, we'll lead work like this. I can get over here. So we'll go ahead get our heat. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. And this is the same similar stuff as a tin and flux. Let's get it in there. You want this to be applied like butter. You see how I'm just pushing it in there? I'm gonna lower my heat just a little bit because I don't want it running on me. And if you see it running, pull the heat off of it. Again, I'm working at the top and I'm working my way down because the lead's going to want to naturally gravitate going down. Working smarter, not harder on this deal. We're getting a little bit too hot there. We want it to go up a little bit, cool down for a little bit. A little bit more there. See, I'm gonna get the stick warmer than the area. It takes a little bit to figure out how this lead flows, but once you get a system, you'll start working it, everything will start coming more and more natural, and you'll become a lot more proficient with it. Now to see how we're doing, we'll go back through with the paddle now. We'll get the paddle, it's gonna get lubed up and hot, and we're gonna wipe some of that off so we don't have too much. You don't want too much, it'll give impurities in there. And you see, we're just wiping it on the denim and we give a, a paddle like that. We'll come back through. I just want to see how we're doing up here. And if we can push it down, we'll start doing that. Okay. 
just easy pressure. We're trying to shape it like filler. Once you see it moving, you can start putting your paddle in there. See, I, I ran extra heavy on purpose so I can walk it down. This is why I like to do a little section at a time. Let's go ahead and adjust the car up to help us. We gotta get a little more paddle lube on here. Heat it up, wipe in our area. What you want, you want more lead on here than you need. We're gonna go through in the next step and we're gonna start filing it down. More than applying the lead, this is the key to the lead work. Really using the paddle and figuring out really makes your final product and really your lead work come out either looking really good or just needing a ton of work behind it. We're going to change angles. Just like before, you can see I'm actually putting my lead above the seam and I'm just letting it drip down into the lead channel. Right now it's a big glob mess, but like I said, we'll go back through with the paddle and try to fix it. Right here, we're using the paddle and I'm kind of just pushing it back up because it wants to still try to roll down on me. I could, if we weren't filming this, I would have rolled the car up on the rotisserie where this lead seam is completely flat and then it makes life so much easier on me. That's why I wait to do the lead work on this rotisserie. I can use gravity if we're not filming. There's no way for two of us to get up at the top of my garage. But if we're not filming, I'll use gravity to help me and get my panel where I'm just pouring the lead straight down and I'm not chasing it. Work smarter, not harder. That just makes life so much easier. But for this video, we're going to do it this way. I mean, sometimes this is how you got to work. As far as working on the angle, what you might have to do, you might have to adjust your torch tip because that's how much, how fast it's heating up the lead. So if you sit there and your lead's getting way too runny, you might have to lower your torch tip tip down and the heat input into it or come off of it faster it's kind of like a welding in the sense that you know everyone does welding different you know travel speed for one person is different for another on a TIG weld same thing with the lead work how fast you're putting the heat in there and how fast you can add filler material is determine how hot your torch tips gonna be so play around with it you'll get it One more spot we're going to do, it's a little low here, so we're going to go back through and we're going to add some. You can see the dip right there. And that's how to add some if you do have to go back. All 
another very important piece of information that we didn't go over was the lead work is only to be done when all the welding, fabrication, and metal work is done on a car. You do not want to weld anywhere near this lead. The weld is going to fail and the lead is going to fail. So this is the final step before the bodywork phase. All right, so we got enough built up right now. We're going to go back through now again and take our, our water, mix in with our bacon uh, soda to go ahead and neutralize because again, just like the tannin flux, this is going to be real acidic. So we're going to go through. It's okay if it's a little bit warm. It'll actually soak in and take the bacon soda a little bit more. So it really looks bad right now. We're going to come back. I'm going to do the rest of the car. Like I said, we'll get it finished up. We'll come back and we'll start the filing process. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, we're going to go over a lot of paddle stuff. We didn't do that on the last one. Um, we focused more on applying the lead. So the paddle, what we do, we get it wet, scrape some off. What do you, this is why we're using a denim. We, we can heat it on here and not melt it. You want the denim where it pretty much turns it to a gloss. You don't want any of this extra stuff. You wipe that off. So you want kind of a glossy sheen where you're not getting those impurities and it'll come right off. So how we're going to do the paddle is basically we're getting it hot and I'm testing it out. We don't want to lay the paddle on too long. Obviously I've caught it on fire before. That's not really the idea. We got our lead applied. We'll go back through and we're kind of just dabbing at it, pushing it, and you're just puttying it right around. And once it starts getting warm, being that I already worked my way out, it's going to take a minute to heat this area up again. You can see why the car is upside down and we do this on the rotisserie. It obviously makes life a lot easier. I couldn't imagine trying to work this area upside down with, you know, lead. We're using gravity to help us right now. So as you can see, we're just getting the heat in there. We're working it in and spreading it like butter with the paddle. There's still enough lube on there, so we're okay with the paddle as of right now. But if you feel like the lead's starting to stick, feel free to re-dip your paddle and reapply. So we're gonna just work our way down with the paddle. And I obviously put too much, but we got a little bit in there that we can, you know, work it down. That's what I'm hoping on. So kind of pulling it down. Just sculpting it. And the better job you do here, the easier job the following is going to be. And really, the less lead you're going to waste. I try to focus more in a larger area with the paddle just to keep everything hot where I can move it. So you can see I'm kind of just aiming the flame on everything. And I'm going there and testing it. Once it starts running, that's too much. And we're kind of, I'm pushing in and I'm kind of manipulating it where I want to go. I'm not slapping it or anything. And see, we got too much up there, so we're going to start pulling it down a little bit. We're going to get a little bit more on our paddle. Again, that shiny uh, surface is what you want. And see, we're going to slowly start working it down towards that area.
And so you push, pull, whatever you got to do. Main thing is don't push too hard. You're kind of just slowly working it back and forth. And same thing, you don't want, you want to keep testing it with the heat. And once it gets too hot, it gets too wavy. And where that little bit's dripping down there, we're not super worried about it because it's not gonna stick with no tenon flux on there. Bring it back up around there. We're just working this puddle straight down. Earlier we were talking about torch and how hot the tip's going to be. You could see here since the lead is a little bit on a flatter area, I'm not working such extreme angle, I'm actually burning my torch a little bit hotter and working a little bit faster. Saying that, I have to be careful because there's more chance of messing up a lot quicker with a hotter torch. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So again, while we're doing this again, we got our water ready with our bacon soda we don't want to get it too um too wet on there it shouldn't be dripping because we don't want to touch anywhere else on the car and we're just neutralize it Do it one more time. So the next step in this, we're gonna go get the file and we're gonna start going over how to file this thing and clean it up. So we'll flip the car back over and we'll come back to you on the other side. We're on to the last step as far as the lead. It's all been applied to the car. Uh, we converted it over with the baking soda and water. We'll go ahead and now we're gonna use our body file. Um, it's directional, just so you know, it only goes one way. I have mine set where I like to push into it. So just know you push and then this backwards motion on mine isn't gonna do much. You could turn it around if you like to pull. There's two sides of it. So this is what you're gonna use first. I do like to go over the lead with our 36 grit DA just to finish it off. Um, so we're gonna probably do that too. While working with the lead, I will say, I do wear a respirator, this is the one time. The fumes don't bother me holding the lead stick. I wash my hands, don't, those don't bother me. However, all the lead dust and particles in the air that I could be breathing in. So I'll, I'll go ahead and wear a respirator now. I'll also go through after the fact, and that's why I keep my area real clean. I'll go back and I'll re-sweep the floor just so no one else is around the area. So be aware of that, that, you know, and if you're really on top of it, you can recollect the lead you shave down and um, remelt it together but we're not going to do that we'll go ahead and put the respirator on and I'll show you we're basically going to start running the passes up and you'll see it'll start cutting this down and then we'll come back uh, before time lapse and show you what we got so let's do a couple um, cuts on it and then uh, we'll come back and see what we got So you see that's the process. We got, we're getting our highs knocked out of it. Basically just going from there to there. 
The file's big. That's why I go back through with the DA. You'll see the file's gonna be hard to get all these areas. And uh, so we'll cut it back down with the DA on a 36 grit just to finish it off and give it a real slick finish. Um, let's put you on time lapse. We'll do some more lead work and then we'll come back and hopefully this will be done. With this body file, this is where you're gonna get your workout for the day. It's a lot of work. It, this lead, it seems like it cuts down but no matter how much you do and how much the pile is on the floor, it seems like it's a never ending process. I am going slow. I'm pushing hard and I'm doing very calculated decisions on where I'm moving my file. You see, I'm working it like I would block sand the car. I'm going at different angles. I'm just working it straight. I'm trying not to take too much off of it, but the file doesn't bend like a, a you would put a block on here. So you kind of got to work around it and just do the best you can. We put enough lead filler on initially that I can go ahead and cut down pretty quick. But once we start getting down to this point, you have to really focus on what you're doing because you don't want to take too much off of it. Once I'm done with the body file, I'll go through it and clean it up. You see, I got 36 grit on the sanding wheel, and then I'll go back through, and this kind of just, I'm feathering the edges in there just to make sure there's nothing real firm where the file can't get. And the same thing, I'm going through with 36 grit to really clean it up, and I'll go back down 80 and 120 grit to match our tooth that we put in the other bare metal so our epoxy is going to stick. This just makes it cleaner. And all in all, you'll have a better job when it's all said and done and kind of just smoothens everything out. All right, now that we're done mixing our epoxy, the car's ready to spray. We're gonna use the Omni MP170. We're trying to get this car being in the bare metal and to protect the lead work that we've done in epoxy as fast as possible. So we got a 15 minute induction period. Let's walk over to the car, I'll show you what we got. So. You can see it's not perfect. There's a couple nick scratches here or there, but it is level and we did do most of the filler work. So we're gonna throw epoxy on it and there's gonna be a small little bit of filler when we go to the bodywork phase that will cover this. But I feel very comfortable using less than a 16 an inch of filler on a very thick lead seam. I think this, this is gonna last a while and when it's all said and done, it's gonna come out really well. I'm gonna show you a picture of the rest of the lead work around the car and we'll come back, we'll epoxy the car and then I'll give you the last couple final thoughts on everything. Here's a picture of the driver's side A pillar with the lead work all cleaned up. Here's the passenger side smooth out. Here's the driver's side rocker with the car upside down. And then the last shot here would be the passenger side rocker. Like I said, the last step in all of this is gonna get this car in epoxy to protect it from rusting and just sealing the whole car up to get a good solid base for the bodywork. You see, I did, like I said earlier in the video, we're gonna go over, we did the fenders and hood again, so we'll have a little thicker of epoxy on there. And then we just work our way down. You're chasing the wet edge when you're priming, painting, all that. I went through and put two coats of primer on this car. I just showed the first coat. And I just, in between coats, you wait till it flash off. Basically, you lose the shine in it. And then you can put the second coat of epoxy. That will give this car a real solid base. It'll protect it and we'll be able to work on top of it. And it also highlights if I miss any spots or anything else. Be in one color. So we got the Barracuda completely in epoxy primer. This is gonna protect it. Everything underneath, as you saw on the top, was all stripped down to mostly bare metal. That gives us a strong base to work on. Whether you're using lead or any other filler application, your stuff will only stick as, as your base material. So if you're putting lead or filler over rust, it's gonna come through and bubble up. You saw that everything here was down to bare metal, so we know our base material is good and this repair should last for years and years to come. You see, we did our lead work down here. We got, I took the door, um, the door bumps out. So we'll go back and we're, when we go to body work, we'll put them back in. You see our lead work on this side's all done. We put the trunk back on the car and you know, our next step on this car is gonna be body work. It's gonna be a couple weeks away. We're trying to get to the warm weather to paint this 
thing. So right now the car is gonna sit here in this protective state and then we'll go over in the next video on this car how to do the body work. But this is a good base for the body work. As far as the lead work, um, I think it's a lot of work. More power to the guys that built these lead sled, you know, the 30, 40s, um, Mercury's chop top and did all that lead work on top of them before the luxury fillers. I'm young enough that I've always had access to Bondo since I've been working on these cars. But man, that must have been a job to chop a car up and put five, 10 pounds of lead, you know, on old lead sled. So more power to them, that was a lot of work. Uh, as far as these jobs, um, I think if you're doing a driver and you're comfortable and you have a good base, I think the all metal's fine. Um, I think the kitty hair would be fine too. If you want that high end build and you know you want to put lead in your car because that's how the factory did it and it lasted 50 years beforehand, I think it's worth it. I think lead works well when it's built up. I, th I think it's better than most fillers. I also, where I will use lead is on corners. If we got something on this door jam that might hit or you might brush up against it, I think that's a great area for lead. You know, you're building up a curve somewhere and I think there's another area, a high stress area. Lead, you could also hammer and slightly body work. It will dent, it will move. Filler, it will automatically crack. So I hope some of this video helped you out. I hope, you know, if anything else, this is just how the process was done and how to do it in the future if you want. Um, experiment with it, um, be safe about it, and uh, like, comment, subscribe to our channel if you like this stuff. We're trying to do all kinds of stuff like this all the time. I'm still learning too, but anything I know how to do, I try to share with everyone else how I do it. Not saying that's 100% the way, but we try the best to do what we can and share the information. So again, thank you for everyone that did already subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a good day.